This college football picks week eight edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a one thousand dollars risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out PropSwap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by Prediction Strike. Prediction Strike is the only performance based sports stock market where you can buy and sell shares of professional athletes. Use promo code SGP to receive a free athlete share with your first deposit of $20 or more. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best NBA better in the U.S.? Odds Crowd is challenging you to prove it with their free to play fantasy betting contest. There's $3,000 up for grabs in their season long contest and $200 every week in their weekly contest. Just head over to oddscrowd.com to sign up now. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Well, I'm still here, and unfortunately, Justin Fuente is also still employed <laughs> as the head football coach. Uh, Sean, I guess uh, I have to come to grips with the fact that for the meantime, just a basketball school. Hmm. Just a basketball school. RIP the Hokey uh, football program. Tough loss. Luckily, Ryan, you were not in the studio watching the game because our own uh, some Seba- filthy yins were uh, our invaded. own uh, Sebastian, mm. aka uh, SGPN Football Doc, does great stuff Love for injury uh, injury analysis for the NFL and the college football game. He was hanging out in studio with his girlfriend, both huge Pittsburgh uh, Panthers fans. So. Ryan, you were fortunate not to be a part of the bloodbath in person. Joining us on the line via remote, his quest. He's slowly, the prodigal son, slowly making his way back to the West Coast. Colby Dant, aka the Dantabase. What's up, Colby? Uh, am I the first ever guest from a res- from a log cabin, essentially? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Well, uh, you know, we a lot of times we don't get video of Coach Leach, so <laughs> AKA never. <laughs> I I don't know what kind of a facility he's broadcasting out of, so I wouldn't be surprised if in one of our conversations he found his way uh, into a log cabin. Quick Mike Mike Leach story. Yeah, lately, uh, just by timing, happened to be watching a lot of Mississippi State football with the kids mm. and I'm I'm ob- ob- obnoxiously drawing their attention. Hey girls, look at that's that's coach Leach. <laughs> look at look at the TV. That's coach Leach. He's the one who likes Bigfoot and they're like, "Oh." Mm. They start they stop paying. It. No, no, look at that. Look at that. This is the air raid. This is the air raid. <laughs> They didn't understand as they were getting their ass beat by uh, Alabama this week. So, well, speaking of uh, getting beat, Kramer and I both above five hundred on the picks. Colby with that uh, that wedding day ice cold streak. Mm. The problem is Colby is too far away from God's eye. Can't blame any performance uh, lacking on. You know, once he gets back into God's eye, he'll well, he'll recenter his pupils. Sean, it's like the fighter. You know, you don't you don't uh, <laughs> you don't drain the old uh, tank. <laughs> Right <laughs> during the season, or or whatever you want to call it. Kramer and I both hit our tees. I hit my dog. You hit your lock. Uh, there also, unfortunately, my bonus lock was a game that wasn't being played. Uh, I picked uh, Florida State over UMass, which apparently is being played this week. I didn't do enough research. Again, my research into the bonus lock was strictly the fact that your first ever UMass. Pass. UMass was coming off a win. Perfect time to fade UMass. I still think it's a perfect time, even with the bye week mixed in there. Quick thing to address. Uh, first of all, uh, Kentucky. Mm, mm, okay. Oh wow! You son of a bitch. That was backing do- back during my that bonus was... lock. And my my apologies. Why I don't just roll with Cincy every week? I don't know. 
But Sean, you 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 buried the lead, eighty six percent. Yes, you are hitting That's your fake. locks at eighty six percent. That's AM radio, <laughs> six AM on a Sunday. You should start selling your picks, right? How fake? Eighty six percent. Couple other highlights. I'm hitting my dogs at fifty percent. My tease is at fifty percent. My bonus locks at sixty percent. Colby still overall nipping at the heels at sixty percent with fifty six point eight. Four percent. That that means we're doing the math. Clearly, if we got the point eight four in there. Uh, look, we have calculators. We we're able to get it done. Uh, ju- in the spring, you guys laughed at me as I told you I'm not a minor college football expert. I'm a major <laughs> college football expert. Eighty six percent. Take it to the bank, Sean. Well, Ryan, and and you you should really correct yourself because mm. we will be joined Sorry. later by uh, Stone Labanowitz oh. and and referring to it as minor. Football, I think, would be pretty insulting to Stone. Uh, well. Stone will be joining us at the end of the show for some Stone Cold Locks. He's also got. A, we also talked to him about the Caleb Williams situation. So, from one college football QB to another, had some nice insight there. Want to stay tuned to that? What minor college football? I thought he was talking about the New York Giants. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> and by well, the way, definitely stay till the end for the interview. Sean tries to to get into some uh, real some football guy talk, and Stone has to correct him. So it's pretty great. <laughs> real football guy talking from from one real football guy to another. If you're a real football guy or gal, you got to be betting over at Win Bet. That's right, W I N N B E T dot com. Head over there, get the nice Win Betting app. Plenty of, uh, I mean, in game wagering. Yes. Chances to win a lot with some boosted uh, parlays. Yes, I mean win bet is just a straight up. I mean you're looking for a in the online sportsbook world. You got to go to win bet a true. And of course they got money line dogs. They got it all. NBA, MLB, of course college football and the National Football League. Make sure you download the win betting app or just go to winbet.com for a risk free bet up to one thousand dollars. If you want a big win big, you got to do it over at win bet LFG. Sean. Yes. I, I was listening to a competitor's podcast. I'm not going to name it because it doesn't deserve to be named, but I, it really, it dawned on me. Like we need to make a fucking mixtape of your ad reads. These other guys, they mail mm. that shit in so hard. I bring the heat right. It's so bad. <laughs> it, it's like, not only that, like you couldn't even take the time to record it with the good studio mic or the good connection. Like <laughs> it you, is very obvious as again, probably a little inside baseball, but when clearly they forgot to do the reads and then, so then email went out, Oh shit, you forgot to do the Squarespace read. And you can just hear the guy doing it on his uh, cell phone on the drive home. It, it uh, I, uh, it's, it's just. You don't get me started, Sean. Don't <laughs> don't get me started. Anyway, well, there's uh, we'll get to the picks, but I think we'd be remiss if we didn't hit on a number of oh. big coaching stories, breaking news. First off, uh, Nick Rolovich no longer the head coach at Washington State University. Shout out to Nick; he was kind enough to join us on the podcast. Guess they it it seemed like he basically got let go as a public the state of Washington mandated all public health officials that they had to get vaccinated. He chose not to get vaccinated and he's no longer working for them, him and a couple of assistants. Uh yeah, I don't know. I mean that, I, it, it, yeah. It seems like what the story is. Uh we'll reach out to Nick, see if he wants to come on and talk about it. But I mean, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say. He kind of dug his he he drew a line in the sand and said, I'm not getting vaccinated. And they said, Hey, this is a public, you know, policy for the state employees. And he got fired. It's it's kind of a bummer because it seemed like he was a good fit for Washington State. And they were kind of working on building something. Obviously, we're huge fans of the program. I feel like they were getting better this year. Uh, yeah, no. They've won three in a row. They're a game out of first place and they still play Oregon. They already have the tiebreaker on Oregon State. This is a huge blow. Huge the cougar guys. Yeah, and you know, I, I guess depending, you know, we could talk vaccine all day, but that's you know, save that for cable news. It's it's just a bummer, I'm sure, for the kids. Um, you know, Nick making this decision. He's a grown man. He can you know stand by his decision, and uh, it's it's pretty interesting too. Like, where does Ed Ed uh, or sorry, where does uh, I'm skipping ahead here. Where does Nick go from here? Uh, can he go coach? I mean, I'm sure he could go coach in the state where this isn't uh, an issue. 
be interesting to see how things uh, go from here. So, uh, but really, the more fun. Well, oh, can I real <laughs> sure, quick what, what as a well oh, as a Cougs fan, I'm ready for the next guy. Yeah, they got to keep it in tradition of having fun head coaches. I don't know, Colby. I know it's just broke, but yeah. Any thoughts on who might be the next Wazoo head coach? I mean, I think they would probably look at Graham Harrell. He's an offensive coordinator for USC. Mike Leach, former uh, OC and also former quarterback under Mike Leach at Texas Tech. Maybe they go down the Leach tree. But I, honestly, I think they're. It's going to be a tough sell, I think, in a way, because first off, it's a tough place to recruit. Yeah, and then a lot of these, co- a lot of the coaches, really, I think they might have a problem with the way Rolovich with the way they handled the role of its situation. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I I think the thing is like early on I, and apparently he applied for some exemptions. I, I don't know what happened. It sounded like they didn't get uh, whatever, they didn't get approved. So I think it, honestly, I don't even think it was the school's decision. Like I think it was the state's decision because they're a public school from my understanding. Now, I, I don't know whatever's going on behind the scene, but I, I had heard reports that like, I guess this, his decision making had been ca- causing problems for a long t- for the past, like really for the past six months to a year. Yeah. They, yeah. I they, mean, I, I think it was a pain in the ass for them, but it seemed like they had figured out, Hey, uh, here are the stricter protocols for people that are unvaccinated. He was following those stricter protocols and you know, yeah, it, maybe there was more to the story. I don't know. I mean, cause it did seem like there was already messaging coming out that you know, th- this didn't seem like a marriage that was going to last forever. I have a name for you, Colby, and you're going to be impressed because they're off to a hot start this year. Seven and zero. Eastern Washington head coach, Aaron best surely knows the area. It, hopefully he's a fun guy. I like it. I like it. I don't know how fun of a guy he is, but he, I mean, Eastern Washington, they, uh, they, they're one of these minor, he was a long snapper. That 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 beat a, a uh, FBS team this year. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we'll see where they go, and uh, best of luck to uh, Coach Rolovich. Whatever happens with his career. Now, in in more fun, mm. and it's it's a little fun just because it's. Uh, I mean, it's pretty wild. The stories. We're gonna combine two things. This this week's real men of Dgens is is pretty easy to guess if you've been following college football, but. Of course, real men of DGENs brought to you by PropSwap.com. Promo code SGP. Head over there to buy and sell real sports bets and get a boost up to five hundred dollars. Perfect time to get in for uh, MLB season as well. Let's hear it, real men of DGENs. SGPN presents real men of DGENs. Real men of D. We salute you. Ed O. Coach Ed O has been fired from LSU separation agreement. Apparently, it was uh, uh, a lot of it was his stuff off the field, including the time Ordron pulled up to a woman at a gas station wearing exercise attire saying, quote, Hey, you look like you work out. He said, according to multiple sources, we could work out together. The women and the woman informed Orjan she was married and pregnant, to which he responded, Why does that matter? The woman was the wife of a high ranking LSU <laughs> official. Word of this reached the LSU Board of Supervisors. The collections of the collection of prominent Louisiana attorneys and business owners appointed by the governor who make the most important decisions at LSU. And of course it reached the athletic director, Scott Woodward. So it sounded like it was Ed O's kind of hijinks and, and just basically it, it sounded like the players, the, the staff, a lot of people kind of thought he was a clown and, and it keeps coming up the women stuff. I mean, obviously we all saw that viral or that viral photo of a woman taking a selfie in bed with Ed O and it seemed like their take was, Hey, you know, whatever he ended up getting divorced. We don't care what he does in his personal time. But it's coming. It's becoming a distraction to the point where he was clearly not as focused as he should be. Ed O would reportedly bring his girlfriends to practices <laughs> and let their kids participate in drills. Which is, I mean, Ryan, even even Sean, as a youth saw- soccer coach, imagine 
Imagine again, hypothetically, I you, had my a mystery. Chick, you had a chick on the side who had a girl. I had like, oh, hey, just bring your daughter or son to my kid's soccer thing. I, I love how family oriented. Look, we we saw this man jogging. That man fucks. You don't bring a guy in who can close a deal like Coach O and expect that he doesn't close deals off the field, too. Period. Exactly. So you know what? He started losing games. They wanted him out because they wanted him out. And they found I mean, look, they planned to get him out. They didn't expect him to win. <laughs> they didn't expect to win the game. No way they planned like they would hundred percent they planned to fire him after the Florida game. One hundred percent they didn't expect to win the Florida game. But no, this is it thing. is this weird to get fired after a win. <laughs> Well, this is the thing. Like they, they have a great under Orgeron. He's three and one against Florida. He's got one win against Saban. I think he's one and three, but that's still good. Uh, and and I, honestly, if you compare it to Les Miles and the way that that the program was going, wasn't going in a great direction. Uh, then you have Saban there prior, but before Saban with Gary Gennardo, like they they, they struggled. So I I, I just wonder. This guy won a national championship just two years ago, and 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 three and one against Florida, and just rolling in top five recruiting classes. What do you have? You heard the rumors that Will Wade's just going to coach football too. <laughs> I heard that in Pasadena at a UCLA game. <laughs> yeah, Matt, that's your sign for game day this weekend, Colby. When you're on the the grounds. <laughs> The hallowed grounds of the Rose Bowl oh. is uh I gotta know. I gotta know. Why why is Will Wade still coaching? Uh one last thing those I'm, tweets, those go tigers tweets or or you know, oh, I mean, hold, yeah. but, but, hold that tiger. But it but it's value. Apparently it's, he was having too many ladies hold that tiger. It's important to bring up though. This this university <laughs> didn't fire Will Wade. No, I mean <laughs> L, LSU is a place that lets things slide. So the fact that Eddie O did so much that I mean this is Louisiana. Like this is not this is not an uptight area. He tried to fuck the, the AD's wife. That's what Yeah, at the gas station. <laughs> what a, that was the greatest line when she said I'm married and pregnant. And he goes, "What does that have to do with anything?" Well, Dude, I mean, what what is it about Edo Edo at gas stations? First it was chicken on the yeah. stick. <laughs> He's just I a mean, huge gas he's a man station of guy. You, you think he goes to a grocery store? This is a man of convenience, but it does tell you if he's doing this at a gro at a gas station. What do you think he's doing everywhere? I mean, ah, <laughs> just just walking, walking charisma and drip. Uh, where does he go next? Wherever he wants, man. Maybe uh, Washington State. <laughs> that would be pretty funny if they hired him. I mean. Uh, I don't know. Is that? I know I was just throwing it out more as the joke, but. Colby, is that is that an insane hire? No, because he I mean, look, he recruits uh he recruits Louise. He's from Louisiana. <laughs> oh, he's good I, at recruiting, especially yeah. when he heads down to the Coog at <laughs> Pullman. Oh, he exactly. would love the Coog. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. I like what you're thinking though. Enough messing around. Let's get to these picks. All right. Cracking things up with the Colby Dance six pack. Starting us off, San Jose State. A five point road favorite as they head to Las Vegas, Nevada. UNLV plus five uh, home dog. Total sitting at 46 and a half. Uh, my main note here is UNLV had a giant slot machine on the sideline. I like that. <laughs> that was fun. Um, where are you at with this one, Colby? I mean, San Jose State, I can't tell if this was going to inspire them the way they hung with San Diego State at home. Multiple overtimes. Eventually, didn't they lost by six? Covered. Does that does that get them fired up? Where I mean, San Jose State. Where are they at? I mean, well, they've had Nick Starkle, their quarterback, out for a while. But I mean, look, this team is underachieving. I, they were one of my ten, like my top twelve locks for the win totals. It ended with last week. Uh, pretty much, uh, I, I don't see a path where they could actually do that uh, to get over seven. And uh, UNLV. Meanwhile, Marcus Arroyo in year two, he's 0 and 11 as a head coach, which obviously you want to say, oh, let me fade that. But like I took them a couple of weeks ago against UTSA, I took them last week against Utah State. This team's getting better. And if you look at their their losses of late, like I said, three weeks ago, they lose to Fresno State by eight. The week before that, they got blown out by like 40. But at the Fresno State, which is a good team, 
They lose by seven to an undefeated U- UTSA team. They lose by four to Utah State. It, they're, they're, I'm telling you, this is the week at the Death Star, Sean. I know you're going there for the Eagle game. Yep. Fly out yep. a little early. Have Thursday some fun night. with the slot machine. I did see tickets for the game were seven dollars, which is uh, <laughs> well, maybe we'll go to the UNLV San Jose State. I, game, it seems like a fun game. I'm with Colby, especially on the short week and San Jose State playing that overtime game. As Colby mentioned, it's a Thursday night game. I think that's a tough turnaround. And yes, UNLV coming off a loss, but you could argue that the game where they held they hung held serve with the. Uh, Utah State. I mean, they hung with Fresno State. Uh, they hung with UTSA. All one score losses. I think five point home dog for UNLV. I I like it. Sprinkle some on the money line. Uh, yeah, I mean, last thing to note: seventy percent of the tickets, but sixty percent of the dollars, or seventy percent of the tickets on San Jose State, but sixty percent of the. Dollars. How many tickets have been written on this game already? Uh, it's Three. A, it's a Thursday <laughs> night game. I it's mean, true. it's an Sean, island game. Sean, it, it, we are in the. We're in that moment of the season where maybe you, you're doing well, maybe you're running out of money. You're hoping basketball's right, right around the corner. I certainly think people are betting on this one, but yeah, I'll I'll take the slot machine. I guess I I, I don't feel great agreeing with Colby right now. As soon as I saw <laughs> this game, I knew what he was gonna do. Uh, but I, yeah, I got, I got several tweets saying that ever since I've been made, my picks have been trash. Okay, so sh- should I just auto fade? He- Question: Do I just <laughs> auto fade Colby this week? No, UNLV is the best. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's going to be tough to trust Colby until he gets back and uh, seeing out of his third eye, aka God's eye. Heading to State College, Penn State. We uh, talked this game a little bit in the interview with Stone. Penn State laying twenty three at home. Illinois catching a massive number, a plus eleven hundred dog total sitting at forty six and a half. Colby, what's your take on this game? Penn State. Coming off a, uh, what it they they were actually a bye week, right? Yeah, and that's why I like their them last here. They, game was uh, the loss to Iowa. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I like them really. And that in Illinois, I think, might have the worst offense out of any team in the Power Five. So I'm gonna take Penn State lay the points here. I mean, uh, the, have you guys had a chance to watch this Illini offense? It is dog shit to the utmost. And when you look at the last time they played, Penn State won by what 35. Give me the Nittany Lions coming off the loss and the bye week to take care of business against the Illini. And also, Penn State knows they can't afford another loss if they're going to be contenders in this in this Big Ten East that's just all of a sudden just loaded with Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, all playing good ball. Yeah, I mean Look this, ahead. this was it. this was at 17, opened at 17. So 23 is a bit inflated, but I, I can't take Illinois on the road. I, I gotta go Penn State here in a bounce back spot. Kramer, where are you at? No, I, I I think you look at what they have ahead on their schedule, and this is this is the spot maybe they don't have to get up for. Uh, I know coming off the bye. Sure, oh, may- shit. You know what? They have Ohio State. You're right. That's next. what I'm saying. It's a I'm gonna go. Spot. I'm gonna go Illinois. Although I'm, I there's no way I'm betting this game, but I'll I'll pick Illinois plus. Is Clifford uh, playing? I don't yeah. think he is. He. Yeah, I thought I. Th- well, That's maybe college. he's. Cool. Doing everything he can to to come back, um, I, I you know, which it it does beg the question, like if you know if they they have Ohio State next week, they can probably beat Illinois with their backup quarterback. Maybe yeah. this is a uh, yeah. Let's take the points. Yeah, and in the Stone interview, I may say take Penn State, but this is my official pick. Give me Illinois. Uh, this is a game everyone's talking about. New Mexico heads to Laramie, Wyoming. Wyoming Lane 20. New Mexico the Lobos, a plus 750 dog total sitting at 51. Colby, why are we why are we breaking down this game? My, I'm in my log cabin in New Mexico. You know I can't fade the Lobos, all right? I had to represent <laughs> Uh, look, last year, uh, and, and I believe December, New Mexico beat Wyoming straight up. Why would this be, and that was, why would this be a 20 point spread? Why? Wyoming doesn't beat teams by 20. They beat them by like three. See the Yukon game where they won by two. Give me New Mexico plus the 20, even though I know New Mexico is not that good. Wyoming is not the type of team to blow out another team. So they can't they they struggle throwing the ball. They run heavy. Uh and and believe it or not, New Mexico's strength is their defense. So I think it's just a game that's 
Give me a, uh, I could see like a 14 to three final score, but uh, give me New Mexico in the points. Kramer. Uh, I mean, I was extremely thrilled to see we were picking this game. Uh, and I, I caught again, I caught a little Wyoming last week, accidentally uh, late night, fell asleep, woke up. The Wyoming game was on. Uh, I don't even know if it was a replay, but that offense sucks. And <laughs> you're telling me that this team, I mean, they were home last week too. You're telling me this yeah, fucking they, they team lost 17 to nothing at home to Fresno state. Uh, Fresno's a good team, but that Wyoming offense sucks. I will be shocked if they can score enough to, to, to cover a 20 points. Yeah. I'm and going, again, I'm agreeing uh, with Colby. Uh, I'm uh. going Lobos too. Although what about the elevation? We haven't talked about the elevation and new Mexico. You know what? No, who? new Mexico has got elevation too. Yeah. I don't worry. Right. I looked this up. Laramie's what? Like 6,000. No, Laramie is 7,100 uh, 7, feet. New Mexico, Albuquerque is only 5,800. That is a 1300 foot jump and new Mexico. Oh, and seven against the spread their last seven. I know Wyoming's offense sucks, but something's telling me oh. they're going to get it done. And any opportunity to fade Colby well done. in his own six pack, I'm going to take advantage well, of that. that. So give me Wyoming minus 20. Oh, man. Love uh, fading Colby Dant on the six pack. And I love hanging on to my own hair. That's right, keeps.com. Losing some of those follicles, got to hang on to those bad boys. You're looking to uh, uh, looking to do anything, you know, sales, your uh, romantic life, hair. Nice set of hair helps you out. Keeps they offer a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. First off, they hit you up with a convenient virtual doctor consultation. Medication delivered straight to your door doesn't get any easier. Low-cost treatments start at just ten dollars per month, and Keeps offers generic versions. That's pretty cool. Discreet packaging and proven results. <clears throat> Keeps also has uh, more five star reviews than any of its competitors. Of course, when it comes to hair loss, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. Yeah, yeah. get in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines. Don't don't watch as you fumble away your follicles. Head over to keeps.com slash SGP. Get your first month of treatment for free. That's right. It's time to take action and prevent hair loss. Go to keeps.com slash S G P. All right. Moving to the second half of the six pack LSU heads to Oxford, Mississippi, where Ole Miss lay in 10 and a half total sitting at 76. We might need to update this line. Why? I, I think it's come down a bit. Okay. Let's see. I'm just double checking that it's not like uh boop, boop, boop. Yeah, it seems like it's uh it's pretty much like between nine and nine and a, we'll call it nine and a half. What is what does the win have it at? Nine right? and a half. All right. So the win has it at nine and a half. Like that. I mean, Matty Corral looking pretty good. I mean, Matt Corral. Is he gonna play? I know he's a little banged up. Colby, what's the latest on Matt Corral? I assumed he was gonna play, but where are I we at? I mean, especially considering, you know, they're still in that race there. If Bama slot loses a game, they'll be right there with it. I mean, uh, but, but they, they, they better thank the refs uh, from that Tennessee win. But uh, look th guys, this is chicken on a stick where it happened. Oxford, Mississippi, when coach O was there, this is a personal game for him. He was fired from Ole Miss as a head football coach. And uh, look, I, I think LSU is going to be able to answer this one with, with, with over a touchdown. Who's the more talented team here? I actually don't know. I still, I'm not buying all the way in on Ole Miss as, as a complete team. I think LSU gets it done on the road in Oxford. Well, and then th this is the latest uh, from Lane Kiffin quote. He's not in very good shape. He hasn't been for the last two days. You guys know how we are in injuries. Hopefully we'll play, but I don't feel great about it right now. I'll say this, this actually kind of makes me think Matt Corral is going to play because lane it would be the type of guy that would throw out some fake injury stuff like this. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, I think this is very easy for me. I think if Matt Corral plays, I, I think they're going to try and light it up. And I think I don't see, I mean, the psychology of this LSU team, are they going to get up? Are they going to be motivated? I mean, Ed Orgeron sitting right there, like 
I, I I don't know. It's it's weird that they announced he's fired and then he's still there. It'd be one thing if he was actually fired. I think this could be a get up spot for LSU, but now you got to travel with this guy. I mean, how is he gonna? What's the pregame speech gonna be? Uh, everyone's just gonna be tuning it out, knowing their coach is fired. I'm gonna take Ole Miss, uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet it yet until we know Matt Corral's status because the backup is not obviously not nearly as good. And Matt Corral actually showed a lot with his legs last game. Kind of a crazy game, 30 carries, 195 yards against the Vols. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, I think, I think. Uh, the other side of this kind of coaching narrative is this is a job interview game for Lane Kiffin. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, isn't Lane Kiffin one of the guys who's clearly going to be at least spoken about as a potential replacement here? Um, now, I'm pretty sure Mel Tucker's already took that job. He just hasn't told anybody. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think, I mean, if Lane. I'm joking, man. I'm joking. No, it's. I mean, Mel Tucker could take the job. I mean, he's, I, you don't think he's going to be a guy that's pe- people are throwing the name around there. I mean, look, he, he showed he's willing to leave. So it's not like, it's not like there's any problem there, but yeah, I, I, I don't see any reason to take LSU here. I I don't agree with your, your, I don't think, I think this is a coach. O like just pussy tour. Like, I think this is a coach. O is going on vacation. He's going to have some chicken on a stick. And he's gonna have some ladies nibble on his stick. I, I, that's it. I don't think he's gonna be focused on football. Why would you? If you, listen, I've been in this exact situation before, Sean. Yeah. Where they literally tell you your job's gonna end in two months. Uh, we're gonna keep paying you, but like yeah, whatever. Come on. I mean, if if Coach O was phoning it in before when he had the job, what's he gonna do now that he knows he's fired? I I, I just don't see him burning the midnight oil, I, figuring it out how to stop Matt Corral. Again, if Matt Corral doesn't play, I think nine and a half is way too high. So I, I'm picking Ole Miss, but I'm giving myself an out because don't bet this yet till you know it's he's not, in there. Yeah, it sounds like he's definitely questionable. It's a legit question. Yeah, Utah, nice win over uh, Arizona State. Should have made that my lock. I mean, the second half they just uh, really came alive. Utah heads to Oregon State, where they're laying three points. In Corvallis, uh, this is a night game, correct, Kramer? This yes. is a four thirty p.m. Pacific kick. Okay, so these times are wrong. All right, so heading to Corvallis, four thirty kick. Uh, I mean, Utah. All their losses have been on the road. They're a good team, but they aren't the same team on the road. I, man, I I almost hate fading them. You. Yeah, you have to. I think you have to take Oregon State. Honestly, I'm going to go Oregon State uh, plus three here. Uh, Utah coming off a big win, road favorite. Uh, Corvallis is a tough place to play. Colby, what are you doing here? I've been on Oregon State since like May in this game um, because <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'm serious. Like no, no, it's just a funny thing that you had your pick locked in in May. I just knew Utah would have that big win against Arizona State and Salt Lake City because okay. they can't win in Salt Lake City. And then I knew, oh, the next week you got to go to Corvallis, which is like, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Pullman as a sneaky spot. I think Corvallis is even, maybe even more. So Oregon State also, they're uh, tied for first place in the Pac 12 uh, North. So this is a huge game for them. So it, it, the Beavers are, we're going to be, they're going to be ready for this one. And I think Utah still. They're, they don't look like the Utah team. I think a lot of people thought they were, we were going to see, I heard people say in the preseason, this might be the best Utah team we've seen. Not, they still don't pass that test to me. So I think Oregon state rolls here. Uh, it, again, this is one of those like auto situational spots, especially with the result Utah just got, you don't lay the points with Utah on the road. They're just going to disappoint you. This is a money line play. Yeah. Yeah. They, they uh, Oregon state feels like a l- very live Beavers, baby. Dog. Fuck, I agreed with Colby again. The bison of Colorado head to Berkeley, California, where Cal is lane 10, plus 300 for the buffs, total sitting at 43. I mean, there's two ways to look at this game. One is just, uh, I, is, Cal, is California really going to lay 10 points? And then you look at Colorado, they're coming off a massive win against Arizona. I, I mean, how bad is Arizona that they, that Colorado puts up, what do they get, 34 points? 
It was a goddamn bloodbath. I was kind of thinking of taking Arizona when it was at seven. I'm glad I stayed away. No, no, no. I, I mean, I'm taking Cal here minus ten, and this feels really good. I mean, this Cal team. I've watched a decent amount of them, and I feel like they're a pretty quality. Uh, team, they can move the ball. They're competitive in, in when they're playing up in competition, and they take care of business when they're playing down. Colorado off a big win on the road. Uh, I I don't know. Colby, are you taking the buffs? No. Uh, look, if you look at last week, they still struggled to move last the ball. Last week felt like a fluke. No, they blocked a punt. They got a defensive touchdown. It was not. Look, Cal is much better than their record indicates. I mean, they've lost, if anything, they've lost, I think every game by like, by uh, with, except uh, the wazoo game, I think by like a touchdown or less. And Justin Wilcox is getting this team going. I just think they're flat out way better than Colorado. And, and if Cal fires, Justin Wilcox, Washington state should be on the phone the next day saying, come to Pullman guys, a good coach. It's been a unlucky year for them, uh, but they're, they're still a decent team. They're better than their record indicates. Little bit of extra rest too. I, I mean, I, 87, 80, like the, the splits for the money in this one are ridiculous. All the money's coming in, all the tickets and the money are coming in on Colorado. Oh, really? Which the Colorado's getting public money? Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So I mean I guess I'm I guess I'm with Colby again, laying ugh, gross. <laughs> Oregon. Heads out here to Pasadena, right up the street. UCLA laying one and a half at home. Total sitting at fifty nine. College game day is going to be there. Um, for some reason, instead of this New Mexico Wyoming game, uh, they're going to <laughs> they're going to Pasadena for Oregon UCLA. There's rumors that Patty C and Colby might be at the game. Uh, Colby, what are you doing here? Oregon UCLA. This spread's interesting. This game's interesting. UCLA has been pretty good at home, uh, with that Fresno game being the exception. Uh, but man, I'm, Oregon Oregon's pretty tough too. I'm gonna take the Bruins. Uh, I I just think when it comes to flat out coaching, Chip Kelly's in another class. Um, College I, coaching. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean. Uh, UCLA and Pasadena has been pretty good with the exception of the Fresno state game and Oregon last time they hit the road, they lose in Palo Alto. Look, both kind of a sleepy uh, home field. I, I give me the Bruins to get it done. I think Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to be just, an, uh, I don't know if you guys, did you guys watch that Cal Oregon game last Friday? Because Thibodeau was a problem. He was a problem. Kayvon Thibodeau, the Oregon defensive end for Cal. I wonder what Chip Kelly will scheme up to stay away from him with Dorian Thompson Robinson. But uh, yeah, I think UCLA makes just enough plays to get it done. Give me the Bruins minus a, minus a point and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think you got to take UCLA here. Um, Chip they, Kelly's going to want to win this game. Yeah. The revenge angle alone. Chip I, Kelly I think seems he'll like be dialed in. the kind of guy who's been like stewing in his room all, all uh, his office all week. Just <laughs> Wanting like just just stabbing, uh, eating duck, nothing but duck and, <laughs> and duck smoothie. Yeah, UCLA. The, the 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 line itself is just it tells you exactly what you need to do here. Like the average person is gonna be like, what? Why is UCLA? Yeah, UCLA's it does feel like, it does over feel like Oregon? Oregon. They're gonna see the ten next to Oregon and think like, oh, I, I gotta, can get Oregon as a, a dog yeah. against UCLA. Oregon's getting points, but this is this is a good spot for UCLA at home here. Clemson heads to Pittsburgh where Clemson, I, when is the last time this has happened? Clemson, a dog in Pittsburgh. They're a three point dog plus plus one fifty on the money line. They should be. Yeah. I mean, they didn't look great against uh, Syracuse Syracuse plus 14. That was, that was a no sweat win for sure. I, I think I, my instincts tell me to take Pitt minus three. The only thing that would scare me is Pitt coming off a massive win against Virginia tech. Maybe a letdown spot here, but it is Clemson. They took it. They took care of business in the letdown spot, in the spot on the road. You're right. In the difficult environment. Yeah. I mean, you just have all. They did uh, turn down Enter Sandman, even, and they they won on the road. I mean, you could say maybe that Virginia Tech game was supposed Mm -hmm. to be a look ahead spot, as you're pointing out, and it wasn't. So I'll take Pitt minus three. It's weird to be fading Clemson as a as a dog, but. Man, they just don't look good. The big Cinco kid, I mean, he's still in commercials, but uh, he he doesn't look. Uh, 
A uh, big Cinco no drinko. I'm I'm not buying it. He doesn't he doesn't look that good. Uh, I love seeing these NF the N- the NIL quarterbacks like Cinco and Spencer <laughs> and Mertz and oh, struggle. Dude, it's just killing these uh NIL deals. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, no, but this game is, is it, I guess your biggest worry should be is Pitt going to Pitt because Pitt is just for the past shit. I'd say for the past 30 years, they're the type of team that uh, can look really good against some good competition and then lose to Western Michigan, which they did earlier this year. Western Michigan beats Pitt at Pitt. It's just, they're always inconsistent. I'm going to take Pitt because I truly think Clemson's a very average football team. And I think Pitt is with Mark Whipple's offense. They're moving that ball and six years, senior Kenny Pickett. I'm going to take Pitt blindly on that. But of course I'm terrified of Pitt pitting this. Yeah. What well, what do we have here? Thou shall never lay points with Narduzzi. That's the problem here. Now that is you, what's scary. It's it's three and under that's the, uh, that's you, what's holding. You watch that offense though. And you're like, huh? Is Ryan Colby? I'm just speaking to Colby here. Colby is is Ryan valuing Pitt too much because they blew out his Hokies and he's thinking they must be really good to come into Lane Stadium and just destroy us. Uh, probably he is doing <laughs> so, but uh, and maybe maybe Virginia Tech will go out and hire Narduzzi. No. Oh man, great? no. Kramer, what would, who would you rather have coaching Virginia Tech next year, Ed O or Nick Rolovich? Oh, Ed O. I need I bring me a guy who can drop bags like that. <laughs> he knows I, how to hire, I mean he hired Joe Brady. Yeah. I mean, smart guy. Smart yeah. guy. <laughs> knows how to close the deal. Uh, yeah. Coffee's for closers. So uh, you're on pit minus three. Never lay points with Narduzzi. So this you're taking team, Clemson. The pit offense looks great, but I, I do think Clemson's defense is the best test they'll face all year. And guess what? Clemson still has a path to the playoff, but they got to win this game, right? Mm. Yeah. Do they still have a path to the playoff? No. No. They haven't There's passed just, the eye test. Too bad. All right. Oklahoma State heads to Ames, Iowa, where Iowa State is laying seven. I mean, the total sitting at forty-seven. I don't know this this line. I mean, I get why Iowa State should be favored, but. Seven points to me seems crazy. Uh, it just seems crazy. This Iowa State team to me, and the Iowa State, you know, didn't come home with uh, Kansas State, but I, I still think this Iowa State team's a bit inflated. I had a guy who lives in Ames and is an Iowa State fan, won't reveal his name, but uh, he's like, you're right, they're overhyped. I, I knew it, blah, blah, blah. But Oklahoma State's eighth ranked in the country. And again, not a big fan of the rankings, but. Seven points seems a bit crazy. I, I got to take OK State plus seven. Colby, what are you doing here? I think they're trying to bait you to take that seven. I know like, that's, I like okay. that, that's what that's what scares me. But just watching Oklahoma State eye tests, this is a team you can't give a touchdown to. But Ames, a top ten road team coming into Ames, this place is gonna be bananas. Give me Iowa State. Uh, minus the seven. They're gonna put. They're gonna finally put it together. I think. And this is the the one. This is a huge game, guys. For the for who's gonna play in the Big Twelve Championship. Texas now has two losses. Um, I know Baylor's still looking all right, but oh, I, really, you could say the winner of this is probably gonna be in a good position to be playing Oklahoma. And if OK State does this, they play Oklahoma the final game of the season. So they would play them back to back, bedlam, two weeks in mm. a row. Uh. Uh, this is a wild one. Give me Iowa State, though. I just think uh, I think Matt Campbell's got them flying under the radar. And when they're flying under the radar, is when they're good. When they're coming in with all the hype, is when they struggle. Yeah, and this is also the kind of game that you know this will be a good test for Oklahoma State. Uh, they Sean Sean could look real smart at the end of this one as they're standing on the money line win, or they they fall behind early and they're not able to catch up. And uh, yeah, I just everyone's betting Oklahoma State. Dog. Like Colby said, th- Dog. that environment will be ju- a little bit extra juiced up because of this this high ranking. And yeah, this is this is the classic Big Twelve upset. Period. It's strange that we're laying we're laying seven here, but like Colby said, this line is dirty. It's filthy. It doesn't make sense. And and I'm not falling for the trap, Sean. Smart. 
Savvy gambling by analysis by Ryan. Real money Kramer. Oh. oh man, two teams I love betting on: San Diego State and Air Force in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Air Force laying three and a half. San Diego State, our gals, a plus one fifty five dog coming back the other way. Oh, man, I I don't know what's up with San Diego State right now, but Air Force at home. I love this Air Force team. I. I kind of think they're legit good and they seem, I don't know. They seem to be able to throw it when they need to. I know not a super convincing win over Wyoming only one by 10, but they, they just won in Boise state. They've destroyed New Mexico. I know those that, you know, obviously San Diego state is completely different class there, but man at elevation in Colorado <laughs> at home, it's going to be a night game. 4:30 West Coast kick, which means it's going to be like 6:30 in Colorado. I just really see them between the elevation and their ability to just pound the rock. I, I don't think San Diego State's going to be able to hang, and I don't think they're going to have the legs, especially after that super long game they just had with uh, San Jose State. So give me Air Force laying three and a half, Colby. I guess I'll join you. This is tough, man. I mean, because I, San Diego State historically plays the Air Force well. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I'll, I'll be watching. I'll, I'll be watching this game probably with my dad, who uh, was in the Air Force. So just factor that into your mojo. I'll take Air Force minus three and a half. Then I mean, can't go against Tom One Green. <laughs> uh, Kramer, what are you doing here? Air Force probably needs to run the ball, right? Yeah. Uh, San Diego State pretty good at stopping the run. Uh, on, only allowing sixty-one rushing yards per game. So I. Look, I, I think um, I think they lock it down. I think uh, San Diego State uh, doesn't need to score a ton. Maybe fingers crossed because I don't think they can score a ton. This is a comically low total for college, forty-one and a half. Give me uh, our gal. They're called our gals, and I'm gonna uh, ignore the, the 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 three and a half point spread here. Give me the points. Live dog, Air Force struggles dog. to move the ball. All right, guys. Uh, before we close things out, coming up with our last couple of picks, and of course the lock dog and tease, and stay tuned for the stone interview. Shouting out predictionstrike.com. It is the only performance-based sports stock market where you can buy and sell shares of professional athletes as if they were stocks. Buy low, sell high. I got a uh, Dawson Knox share. He had a uh, pretty solid Monday night game. So hopefully he's uh skyrocketing in value and it's uh it's pretty fun. I mean, again, it's you're into crypto, you're into the stock market. It's a lot like that, but instead of uh yeah, it's instead of uh just boring numbers or ETFs, it's actually stuff you care about, aka professional sports, professional athletes, a lot of fun. And uh the best part is use the promo code SGP, get a free athlete share with your $20 deposit. So again, deposit for $20, load up on some shares of players, you get your free share, a lot of fun, and I uh, can't recommend it enough. Go to predictionstrike.com, promo code SGP. And I thought Dustin Knox had a touchdown. He did not. He was only three for twenty-five. I swore he had a touchdown. He also got hurt, so rest okay. it, hopefully he's. So well, there goes my. Uh, if anyone wants to buy my uh, prediction strike shares of Dawson Knox, uh, DM me after the show. Slide in. USC heads out to South Bend, Indiana, where Notre Dame's Lane Seven. USC, the Trojans, a plus two hundred five dog total sitting at fifty eight. Colby, what do you got here? <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh, I'm going to ride USC. I'm just going to think I, I look, I understand they look horrible this year. I think they'll get up for this one. This is probably the only game on the uh, uh, left on the schedule. Maybe that UCLA game that they'll actually get up for Notre Dame's probably still going to get the win, but give me the seven and USC. Give me a 24, uh, 21 final. Yeah. It, it feels like this is going to be a game. USC is playing a little bit better uh, post uh, coach firing. They're both coming off the bye. I, I think that will give USC enough time to figure something out. I, I also I just think the there's a lot of questions at the Notre Dame quarterback. Like, you know, talking to our boy Dano, shout out uh Dano and, and Notre Dame. He said I was almost banned from his comedy show Ponchos for sharing the uh Rudy meme where he had the Cincinnati Bearcats logo on his Letterman's jacket. Um 
So I, I think that loss it is hurting Notre Dame as far as them being bitter, but I think it kind of exposed the question marks at the quarterback position. Like I know in college you can kind of get away with playing two quarterbacks. I just don't think they quite have it figured out. USC playing with house money again with the new coach. Uh, I think they're in a pretty good spot. Seven points is a lot for a Notre Dame offense that has a decent number of questions. Some SC guys trying to get uh, into the NFL. I'm sure. Yeah. National TV under the lights. Like Colby said, get up game money line. I think, I think you sprinkle it. Let's go. Ohio state laying 19 points in Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana, a plus 700 dog on the money line, total sitting at 60. I mean, Indiana's shown a little sign of life. What are we doing here, Colby? I mean, you know, I'm Ohio take, State. Yeah, I'm going to take the 19, but I mean, it, I first off, how is Ohio? This is why the sport is, is look, I love college football more than anybody, but this is oh. ridiculous that, that Ohio State is ranked ahead of Oregon. They have the same record and Oregon played at Ohio state and beat them and never trailed the whole game. Yeah. That is is pretty crazy. No, the rating system is completely out of whack. Although got a lot of feedback about you saying that uh, Iowa was better than Georgia and Mm -hmm. uh, people, people wanting to call you out for that. Any, any thoughts on that? Okay. I should clarify. Yes. The resume is (laughs) bet was better. Now, obviously, it's not, but I still, I still, I stand by my uh, answer. If that game was played in Iowa City, I do think the Hawkeyes would win that game. Yeah, um, an, another night game here, another massive home dog. This feels like Indiana's Super Bowl to a certain degree. I think they'll get up for Ohio State. Ohio State has probably their biggest game left on their schedule with Penn State the following week. Easy to look ahead past Indiana when you're a 19 point road favorite. So, and you know, Indiana keeps it close at home. I mean, they're not a team. I, I, you know, they lost by 14 to Cincinnati. That actually looks like a decent loss right now. They lost by five to Michigan state. That wasn't a bad, and that was last week. So I think 19 is just way too much for Indiana. Ohio state rolls minus 19 backup score points. This, this gets dirty. (laughs) I mean, I, I I just think that Look, Indiana is not a good team, and I think Ohio State has enough players that play second string that can score points in this situation. So I don't think they, even if it's a look ahead, I think they might they might be able to cover this by halftime. Indiana is fraudulent. There's some fraudulent teams well, in the Big Ten this year. I, I think they were fraudulent compared to what they were, you know, like how they were being discussed coming into 2021, certainly. But I don't know if they're fraudulent, you know. I mean, as a 19 point home dog, I think they're factoring that in that they are not that good. Well, they also gave Ohio state a scare last year. So Ryan, he day has that to kind of remind his players, this Indiana team can sneak up on you. Nevada four point dog as they head to Fresno, California, plus plus one sixty on the money line. 61 is the total Colby lead us, lead us to the promised land with here uh, with this pick Wolfpacker. It, they're interesting. If you like quarterback play, I mean, these two quarterbacks are really, really good. Um, I, I think you got to take Nevada plus the four. I think Nevada's m- the more proven team. I know Fresno is coming on this year and looks like the real deal for the most part. And uh, but Carson Strong and and the Wolfpack they they can move the ball just as good as Fresno State. And I actually think Nevada might have the better defense there. So give give me Nevada plus the four. Sprinkle some on the money line. I mean, Fresno has been, they, they started out really hot and they, they little bit of reliability problems. Uh, and I think like you mentioned, I mean, Carson Strong was getting some serious hype preseason. He, I feel like it's quieted down a little bit and uh, yeah, I mean this, I, I saw this was three earlier. It's now four feels like one of those divisional matchups, AKA conference matchups that yeah. uh, take the points. Yeah, no, Nevada. Are we worried about the kids from Reno uh, getting into trouble in Fresno? Is that <laughs> do we enter that? No, I mean, I, I think you take the points. I've agreed with Colby way too many times. Uh, I mean, Fresno State's good. I guess if you look at the common opponent, Fresno State lost to Hawaii. Nevada was able to take care of them. I, I just this feels like uh, it's gonna be a good game. Nevada's playing pretty good football. Should uh, be three. I, yeah, I, I think 
this feels like a field goal game. You're giving, you're getting four points with Nevada. Doesn't make sense to me. All right, time for the lock dog tease and bonus lock brought to you by oddscrowd.com. Make sure you head over to oddscrowd.com. NBA is tipping off. They got a sweet three thousand dollar fantasy betting contest where uh, again you make picks for the NBA mm. against the spread and a uh, chance to win free cash. Doesn't get any easier than that. And of course, oddscrowd.com. You can host your own fantasy betting contest with you and your buddies. They got a whole social app uh, aspect of it as well. Again, just go to oddscrowd.com. Enter your picks. Great pick tracking. Uh, for your chance to win, oddscrowd.com. Kramer, kick things off. Lock, dog, tease, bonus lock. Let's do it all. Uh, well, happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday Mr. President. Uh, uh, the six pack w- is filled with so many just glorious spots. It's unfortunate I have to pass on all of them. Uh, <laughs> So for my lock, uh, the state of Oklahoma has has been been good to me lately, uh, and I know the, the the square sharps will be all over this Oklahoma State team on the money line. Give me Iowa State laying the seven. They take care of business. This one gets out of hand. Oklahoma State not enough offense to get it done. In fact, the offense is responsible for the reason they don't cover. Pick six late. All right, dog. You know this is a a, a dog a laden card. I, I can't trust USC. That's a fun one. I don't want to give uh, out something like Nevada. Feels a little, maybe a little too short. So uh, I'll go. I'll go to a. Uh, you know what? I'll go with a short one. San Diego State gets it done. Plus one fifty five on the money line. Our gals. Our, our gals. Tease. Oof. How do you not send Nevada to ten? There's some key numbers there. We'll take Ohio State down uh, to what's that? Thirteen, Sean. Across yep. some key numbers there. Math checks out. And uh, last leg of the teaser. Let's take. Uh, let's take Illinois up to twenty nine. <laughs> That's. It. I'm channeling my inner Colby right now. That it, that does sound that like is- a Colby tease. What about your bonus lock, Ryan? Uh, well, I, I was a little upset with myself last week for not putting this team in because they are just printing money right now because style points are back in college football. Give me Cincinnati laying 27 and a half against Navy. Oh yeah. Uh, love, love Navy, love everything they bring. But unfortunately Cincinnati's got to whoop your ass this week to make the playoff. And uh it seems like they're de- they're destined to score fifty against everyone from here on out. Just something to keep an eye on. Yeah, lay the twenty seven. This is going to get to twenty eight. So grab twenty seven and a half now. Cincinnati laying twenty seven and a half. All right, for my lock. Man, I don't like laying double digits, but hard to get away from this Cal spot. Ooh, I mean, shocker. Colorado's just going to get their ass kicked. I, I, I. <sighs> I just don't see it happening for my dog, just for the uh, comedy of the show. And cause I think they're a pretty good team. O- Oklahoma state plus two ten. Mm. Look out Ames. Here comes Oklahoma state. Wow. Okay. The van Gundy hype is real for my tease. A lot of interesting uh, teasable options. I'm going to take Ole miss down to three and a half. What else do I like here? Ooh. Do I tease UNLV up to eleven? You know what? No, I'm going to take Wyoming down to minus fourteen, and I will take uh, Indiana. Could really get their ass kicked. Nevada up to ten, like that. Stealing that from Kramer. Do I? Hmm, um, thank you. Is Florida State automatically my bonus lock because I've already given it out? Feels like that would be the only. Thing. Okay, thing. I'm going to give out FSU minus thirty five, and to make up for my bonus lock, Alabama. First half against Tennessee. Uh, the first half lines aren't out yet, but it should be like minus fourteen. So oh, lock that up against out, Tennessee. First half lines. I, I like it's it. It's a strong trend. Colby, what do you got? Lock dog tease bonus lock. Uh, lock. Let's go. I mean, I'm I'm gonna join you on this cow minus ten. All right, old faithful there. Uh, fade the buffs. I'm sorry. It, it it's horrible to say, but you got to do it. Um, for the dog, let's go. Uh, 
Let's go Nevada on the money line plus one sixty. Mm. I think that's your play there. Um, and for the tease, let's take uh, let's take Cal down to four. Let's do <laughs> where where are we at here? Let's go with uh, what is this? let's take Penn State down to seventeen. Okay, and let's take LSU up to fifteen and a half. He's in Penn State. You're a savage. What's and your bonus uh, lock? Bonus lock is going to be on the the Great Island of Hawaii. Um, oh, they're shit. playing New Mexico State, guys. Late night game, Saturday night. I'll be watching with God's eye. Um, lay the eighteen, take the Rainbow Warriors. They're good when they're on the island, and they're playing New Mexico State, the new SEC team. So <laughs> I say you lay the eighteen and and watch the Rainbow Warriors win. Hawaii minus 18. All right. Uh, well, uh, this is normally where we wrap up, but we got a bonus interview with stone Labanowitz giving out some stone cold locks. Thank you to Colby and uh, Colby. We'll see you soon as you uh, return to the uh, state of California and God's eye. Make sure you subscribe to the college football experience and uh, stay tuned. More picks coming up with stone. Joining us on the line to give out some stone cold locks in just a bit. Stone Labanowitz. Stone, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, great to have you back on the show. Appreciate you filling in for uh, Colby. Although Colby wow. oh. will be calling in, uh, or we, we've certainly we've already heard from Colby. I don't know whenever this is going to air, but uh, thanks for calling in. Good times. Uh, last time we talked. Uh, we we were talking about Oklahoma and Spencer Rattler maybe going off, maybe having a good game. Rattler continued to struggle a little bit. Now Caleb Williams uh, takes over quarterback at uh, Oklahoma. What's your take on uh, Caleb Williams so far? So it's weird. You guys not talking to me, you wouldn't know my stance on Spencer Rattler ahead of time. It almost seemed like I was an Oklahoma guy. I'm not necessarily an Oklahoma guy. I just thought it was a good spot for them. Yeah. And I got, I got <laughs> robbed completely when the inaugural or whatever Darren Sproles and them were the cat case state of okay. smoke is Skylar Thompson with his fucking arms folded. And he comes out the tunnel and the place erupts. Nobody said a darn word about Skylar Thompson coming out and playing that game. So <laughs> I wanted my lock voided. I should have complained. I should have should have whined, but I mean it is. We'll have to file you know, a complaint to the official uh, lock board. Yeah, and that was uh, I mean that one was a bad beat because that if it wasn't for that kickoff return for a touchdown late, that was kind of just you know, pretty random and definitely an outlier. Uh, you would have covered there, so you know not 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 busting chops on the uh, lock miss, but more more Caleb Williams. He now seems to be the guy taking over for Spencer uh, Rattler. Had a really good uh, first game. What's your thought on uh, Caleb Williams the rest of the way? Yeah, um, I'm a Caleb Williams guy, and I, and I like the situation and how it's happened. It almost seems organic. You know, we were waiting for Oklahoma to have that game, have that game, have that game, and Spencer Rattler, and it never seems like they did. And then Caleb Williams gets his first start, and they score almost 50. And it's Kyle Oklahoma fans are like, you know what? Well, we'll it's fine. Right with Caleb Williams, and we're going to move forward. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with anything – on Netflix or any of the QB one stuff that they follow some of the QBs around. Well, Spencer Rattler is infamous on that QB one show. I had never seen him prior and the kid was a douche on that thing. He's not cool to his teammates. Nobody <laughs> seemed to have liked him on his team. And that's high school. I mean, your team's supposed to love you and want to go to war for you. And the kid was just not a cool teammate and stuff like that. So that's always stuck with me because I'm a locker room guy and stuff. So I kind of love, this is karma, Spencer Rattler. Like, what? Are you, two months, he's in the transfer portal. Yeah, and no, no, and and that's it's weird too. I mean, there's a, the bigger aspect of it. I mean, besides the football aspect, is that Spencer Rattler is. You look at the list of the most high-paid NIL athletes, and Spencer Rattler is right up there. Uh-oh. I mean, it's got to be pretty crazy for someone. Let's say you have a, a local car dealership or what, whoever was paying him. And you give this kid all this money, and now he's benched. I mean, could you go to him and be like, "Hey, sorry, give some of that money back. We got to give it to that, Caleb that's Williams." Some, that's some serious pressure right there. <laughs> and I think to the point of uh, him being a douche and being a brat, I, I think it was noted by multiple uh, media outlets, and especially a couple of Oklahoma B reporters, that 
the sideline looked happy for Caleb Williams, mm. almost as if this like Spencer Rattler wasn't the guy, and maybe the entire team raised their level because they're just and, and not to mention you mentioned it earlier. He's got a little Josh Allen in him. He's just a fun guy to root for. He's willing to take a risk. Spencer Rattler looked like a guy. Uh, not to call out, we were talking about Michael Porter Jr. on the NBA previews, but Spencer Rattler looks like a guy who was just trying to play it safe to the next job, aka the NFL. And now you got to wonder. Yeah, what is this? Uh, I maybe you are a, a draft expert. Maybe you will be our our quarterback uh, draft expert here, Stone. But what do you think this does to Spencer Rattler's draft stock a, as an NFL team? You you can't take this kid in the first no. round, can you? Don't think you can. What's the movie Draft Day? Yeah, no one shows up. To his, no one shows up to his birthday party. Yeah, this is this 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 is your typical case. No one shows up to the kid's birthday party. The team gave up on him. The Chan Channing, we want Caleb. Yeah, I mean, I think for general managers and coaches, I mean, this is a character thing. First round, he's definitely out of the first round, dude. And it really is going to depend on where he transfers to and if he can land at a school where he initially starts and messes with the team and stuff. So yeah, I think as of right now, he's completely out of the first round and it's all on him to find the right landing spot. He's got to go somewhere. Maybe not top tier. Maybe he drops down uh, to the, to a group of five and, and dominates to get the draft stock back up there. I, I I think the toughest thing, you know, it is a sh a quick media cycle, so people do forget. But football guys don't forget you being, uh, you know, a, someone who runs from a problem. Yeah, and and I think just we've always talked about Lincoln Riley as being this quarterback whisperer. You go there, you get a chance to win the Heisman and play in the NFL, and Spencer Rattler was his guy. He recruited him. Yeah. wasn't a transfer, and, and he couldn't get it done. And, kinda, and, kinda and hit the wall here late. But and you see the way undefeated. that it's Lincoln weird... Riley's crazy ass reacted to a little <laughs> adversity too. All the controversy, blacking out the. So yeah, I mean, I think they're still undefeated. I, I like my chances as uh, someone who picked them to be in the Nash to win the national championship. They're going to be in the playoff. Now at that point, maybe we talk about hedging out against one of these SEC teams, but. Looked at like you said they haven't lost yet. So Caleb Williams, I mean, we've seen it before. Yeah, Tua does he <laughs> to get a little run there? Well, you mentioned Tua, and I I, I want to get Stone's take. Former college football uh, quarterback, of course, for our Salukis. I'm a huge Eagles fan, Jalen Hurts fan. I want to see him succeed. I'm really annoyed at the kind of offense that Sirianni is calling. I mean, you know, against the Bucks, and granted they were outmatched against the Bucks, but they only ran the ball once in the first half, like a design run to the running back. And if I was playing quarterback, or more importantly, if I was playing defensive line and I knew they were throwing the ball every single time and I just got a pass rush the entire time, you're putting so much pressure on the offensive line. I mean, I I know it's fair. We should be critical of Jalen Hurts, but what do you think Nick Sirianni can do for Jalen Hurts, and, and what is Jalen Hurts not doing at the next level? You know, I, I saw a segment the other day. I don't know if it was on NFL Network or where it was, but they went through a string of like twenty plays where there was not a single motion. There was no yes. movement. Yes, and and you got to think: is this NFL analyst doing more homework, or does he know more than Nick Sirianni does? And that's got to just be so scary. Like, how can we, as armchair quarterbacks, notice this about your offense and, and kind of see that? So, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I don't want to say I know. It's like they should know more than we do. It's really, really weird. I don't know if they went into Thursday knowing that Tampa Bay secondary was banged up and that we're going to attack it. That's their weakest link because they are very, very good against the run. At the top yeah. five in the NFL. And it was starting the season. They were number one um, last year. But yeah, I don't know. It, I, I've been asked a question just like you asked me, and it's like I don't think it's my place. Like it just seems like there are better people that know more about it, and it's like I don't want to try to put a finger on it. It's just weird to me. It's weird. It's really weird, and I I, I feel sorry for you. It's the it's a <laughs> it's the trailing. It, it's what happens. You know, the football guy culture is certainly a culture that's going to take time to bend the paradigm of how we think about football. And while we thought Sirianni maybe was more progressive, I, I think at this point, no, I, objectively, I, if you're not using pre-snap motion, yeah. you're scared that your team can't handle it. And you're going to have too many procedural penalties. Cause it's such an advantage. 
it's such a clear advantage, especially for young quarterbacks, especially for quarterbacks who maybe aren't, aren't the best at processing a la Justin Fields. Look how much pre-snap motion uh, they were using in their last game. So I, I think, yeah, I, I think uh, the, the no pre-snap motion is crazy. And, and to your point, it's very yeah, Jason you, Garrett, you use it so you can see, okay, are they running man? Or are they running zone? If I, if they're running man, I audible to a man beater, right? Uh, Stone knows what it, I'm talking about. Easily, easily. It's, well, um, it's weird. I, I, yeah, it's just weird, man. It's just odd. It's just really odd. You know what it is? They were too busy grinding film while we were too busy playing Madden. So we know <laughs> how to do it. We know how to get the, the man beater. We know how to audible the running back to the flat. The, the seam route. We understand the coverage is better than these knucklehead. Uh, let's just go out and do some Oklahoma drill yes. stuff. Let's Sirianni always off. seemed a little bit simple. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe just me. Say, I will say as a player, one thing I know, and this is, you know, we're human beings as well, as much as you think the coach really dictates what goes on, you know, you kind of want to ask your player and talk to your player. And it seems like that's not going on. What I can see really happening is in a practice, Jalen Hurts, or if the twos are in and then Jalen Hurts is sitting back coach or his receivers or other offensive players. And it's like, yo, like you guys notice that we're not, where are the motions at and all this stuff. And you start to tell the players that instead of talk to the coaches and there's a disconnect there, you're doomed. You're yeah. doomed. Hmm. All right. Well, let's get, get back to college here. Full slate. A lot of good games. What is a, uh, what is jumping out at you stone for a stone cold lock? <laughs> there's a few. And I want to, I want to throw a, a, a teaser in at the end. Okay. I want to follow the teaser. And I know you guys are really messing teasers, but a few of the plays first. One that really streamed out at me is Colorado State <clears throat> minus a field goal at Utah State. They're going to Logan, Utah. Now, I feel like I got a little bit of mojo, a, a little bit of good juju in, in, in the state of Utah. So it was interesting because we went and practiced there before we played Weber State. And so, so I yes. thought that was cool. Also, I have a great relationship with Toddy Santeo, the quarterback at Colorado State, former Temple kid. He's a 5'6'1 kid. He's a South Florida product. We had the same quarterback coach. We were on a circuit together. We played. We went to every camp together. Me and him were very tight. And I bring that up because I followed him, like, everywhere he's gone and everything he's done. And they took the L to South Dakota State. We had talked a lot that week. He's like, yo, Break some break some film down with me. Let's talk about this. And we did. And then they went and, and got that ass spanked by an FCS. <laughs> that was weird. But it looked like they weren't really ready. It looked like South Dakota State slapped them in the mouth. But they're starting to find their grooves. And they played really well last week and beat up on a bad New Mexico State team. I think it was 40 or something. But they're minus a field goal. And what's really sticking out to me is they ran the ball a total of 60 times last week. Now, I think the running back, one of the backs had ran 21 times, the other kid like 10 or 11, and then the rest was Toddy. And when you go through kind of how much, how many rushing yards they're allowing, two weeks ago, BYU, uh, one of the seniors rushed for 225 yards against Utah State. And then, was it last week, <laughs> the UNLV squad took them to the brink, and if Utah 30 seconds left they were going to lose to the worst team in college football with no quarterback they're on their third or fourth string quarterback so it's like there's a few ways you can come back from that you can answer with a lot of energy or that's really who you are and it seemed like that's who they were the UNLV kid rushed for I don't know 221 yards or something like that so I think it's just a bad spot for Utah State being rushed for almost 500 yards the past two weeks combined and then you get a team that wants to ideally run the ball with a quarterback who's able to use his legs and is finding his groove. I think it's a really bad spot for Utah state. I like Colorado state minus three. Yeah. If, if there's one thing Adazio uh, can, can do right, it's hand the ball off. So yeah. And if you, uh, if, and I, I love the angle on that. I, I like Colorado state, like you said, to be able to pound the rock there, get that minus three now, because I, I think some places are already moving it closer to three and a half and it opened at one. So it does seem like it's moving towards three and a half. There are some threes out there. So uh, Utah get State that before it gets too with crazy. The, uh, the slot machine hangover from UNLV there. <laughs> that was pretty cool. when they had the slot machine on the uh, sideline there. Fury, that was you, awesome. Yeah. Except for the fact that I thought it was one of the better ones. And it's like, kind of like a, almost like a middle finger to the NCAA. <laughs> you're like, you're being, 
on the sideline. I was a fan, but it's a little risky. I don't know whose decision that is to put that thing on the sideline, but I love it. <laughs> did you guys uh, at Southern Illinois, did you ever have, I mean, a Saluki is, at, you know, what, what exactly? A race dog. Race dog. Did you guys have any dogs on the sideline? What was the, you, what was the thing you guys had? We definitely had the dogs. We had Salukis and they're expensive ass dogs. They were all over the sideline and they were being, being, bring around the fans and stuff. No, it was never something we, we really utilized for the most part because it's a <laughs> kind of girly. It's kind of a girly dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's got a certain appeal there. That uh, Saluki it's a speed. It's it's yeah, a, it's a fast. refined, beautiful dog. So you send that you send that route uh, the dog on a fly route. Send him yeah. on a zero. You like yeah. how I throw some real football you're, stuff? You're such when, a smart guy, Sean. Well, if ex football player yeah. yourself, a zero route. Stone knows what I'm talking okay. about. I think a fly route's a nine route. Okay, but, yeah, but. that's what I would meant. Sean played. He was a tight end. So. It was different. It was different back in my day. Zero might be wide receiver screen, so you're on the complete okay. opposite. Yeah, you know, zero nine, same difference. All right, what's your uh, what's your next lock, Stone? What do we got? Okay, listen, <laughs> I love this one the most, but I don't because I hate the number. But I, I love to play the most. So me and my group at Enterprise Sports. So I know you guys have met. Yeah, come around a little. Yeah, bit. good guys. We're going to. Um, Penn State this weekend. Oh, hell we're, yeah. We're, we're going to be in Penn State versus Illinois and um, be hanging out at the tailgates and some of the fraternities and getting to know the fans and how they get down because, I mean, they're top five for sure. That White House, um, we're excited for that. But I think there's a few stats. Looking at the game, it's like, you know, of course we want to bet it. We're going to be drunk. We're going to be there. We need <laughs> some action. We're going we're, we're gonna to throw down on this game. What's it going to be? And I found some, some, some good stats. Illinois is one and four their last five against the spread Penn state's five and one. I think their last six against the spread or something like that. The under in Illinois last five row games is five and zero, oh. and for Penn state, it's seven and three when they're the favorites. So everything points to the under Penn state plays Ohio state. It's a look ahead spot. So we're not going to see Sean Clifford if he's able to play and they're 23 point favorites. They'll win without him. So I think they hold back some of their guys and Roberson, and I believe, I don't know the third string quarterback's name, but Franklin said they were competing for the job this week. And I got on here last time and talked about how I, how much I hated that shit, man. You can't do that. You're going to divide your team. Your offense can't find any rhythm. So if you've got guys competing for the job, I don't expect your offense to come out and perform that well. Um, also, they're starting running backs out and use the same verbiage with the running backs, that they're competing for carries. That again isn't healthy. So you have you don't know who your quarterback's gonna be. You don't know who your running back running back's gonna be. Um, Illinois, on the other hand, hasn't scored more than 14 points their last four out of their five games. So they they're both coming off a bye. So you, you would like to think that they've had time to prepare offensively, but man, this thing's gonna be low scoring and the numbers at 46 and a half, but I'm gonna go under. Everything points towards the under, underwhelming start, maybe like a maybe like a 17 zero or something. And you should coast and cruise from there. But I like the under 46 and a half for Penn state, Illinois. I think it's the only action that you're able to grab at that. Cause you don't want, <laughs> well, yeah. And, and I, I like obviously Penn state in the game. It opened at 17. If you were going to play it, that was probably the time to play it at 17. But now that it's up to 23, it's it's probably a little crazy and I, and I twenty three like, point spread with a forty six and a half total is pretty impressive. Yeah, and it, that's telling you they don't think <laughs> Illinois can score on the road, which is a great point. And I, I think they're going to struggle to put up points. Yeah, it does feel like this could be like twenty four nothing. Uh, maybe you get the cover, but it does feel like the under is the safer way to go. I feel bad for you, Stone, having to go to this. I mean, the the environment will be crazy. But as far as the game script, I, I think you're right. It it could be a low scoring affair here. For sure. For sure. And then my third one, look, man, I, I really gear everything towards the quarterbacks. If I can find something that, that connects with me and that I can get a read of how things are working, I like to do that. And I know we all watched and I was hearing Colby and Patty and you guys talk about um, what happened in the Ole Miss Tennessee game. And I stayed up. I was watching that shit show and that was awesome. But I don't think what I realized right off the bat was that <clears throat> The hooker kid went down like the last, the right before the last play of the game. I cannot stand Joe Milton. I think he's awful. I think he's awful as a quarterback. It's 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 almost like sickening 
how evident it is to watch him. He can't read defenses. It's like if I'm over here, some Joe Schmo realizing you can't defense, they're, you're in trouble. Like you're in major trouble. And you're walking in right into Bryant Denny Stadium. And if Hooker can't play, you got Nick Saban, who's a yeah. defensive back, who's going to disguise coverages all day. And you are going to get ran out the gym. Now, I don't like the 25 and a half number or what it's particularly at, but I love Alabama in a route, especially if Joe Milton plays. And that's where my teaser comes into play. Ooh, okay. So, what, what are you going to put together in this teaser? Right. So, I have three teams in this teaser, and that's typically not how you want to do it. But I, I think if each of these pushes, I'm going to take all my locks and tease them by 10 points. I think it comes out to um, a minus, a minus 120, a minus 125 play. <laughs> oh. 10 points. So, you're taking Colorado State at plus seven. Yeah. Which I think is right through there. And if, it, if it is just run versus run, it's really going to be who has the ball last. And, and if they go, want to go win by one, two, three, four, seven pushes right through that, and you're solid on seven. Now, I, what worries me in the Penn State game is if Penn State does want to play well offensively, and we get like a 42-10, Illinois scores a touchdown maybe and a field goal, and they push. I wouldn't want to get burned like that, something lame like that. And I wanted Alabama any number under 20. And with that 10, it takes them to, I think, 14. Because I think they said at 24, 25 right now, minus 15 if you tease it. So it's a three team, 10 point teaser. You got Colorado State plus seven. You got Illinois, Penn State under 56 and a half. And you got Alabama minus 14. Sure. I think those, like, right through those key numbers, but that's my three team, 10 point teaser. Sure. Minus one. Hit the DGENs only, Rob. That, <laughs> Hashtag DGENs only. Coming to the table with a 10 point, oh, three yeah. team teaser. I think that is the debut of the 10 point you, teaser you on. You mentioned how sports it, game in pocket. it's not something we like to, we love to get into that stone. You're, <laughs> you, you're instinctually <laughs> on our level. Let's fucking go. All right. Go. So to recap, Stone likes Colorado State minus three. He likes the under 46 and a half, Illinois, Penn State. And he likes Alabama. 25 and a half, probably too big, but he suggests doing it as a three team, 10 point tease. Love it. Love it. Awesome. And you're going to be at the Penn state game. Uh, I went to school at Penn state for a couple of years. So text me, maybe I can uh, give you a couple spots to uh, check out. I know we have a bunch of listeners at Penn state, so I don't know you know, make sure you follow uh, stone on Twitter at Labanowitz stone L a B a N O W I T Z stone. And uh, yeah, I mean, hit them up. See yeah. where they're going to be posted Slide up. Slide into going those to the DMs, game. right? Yeah. Say what's up to the fans. DJ and meet up in, uh, yeah. in in Happy Valley. Shotgun some beers uh, for uh, <laughs> SGPN Stone. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely not. I appreciate you guys a lot, man. Let's make this money. All right, let's go. All right, thank you for tuning into the podcast. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed to the Sports Gambling Podcast, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Download the SGPN app. Got a bunch of uh, awesome content on that. Easy way to access all our content: SGPN in the Google Play Store or App Store, and uh, drop us a nice rating and review on the Apple Podcast app for your chance to win free gear every Monday, aka Merch Monday. Give us a follow on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Program dumpster fire alert: Tennessee. Heading to Tuscaloosa this weekend. Lay Alabama laying 24. You might want to grab that now. Cramp. Let it ride.